right, it is now 12 o'clock. We are broadcasting live to attendees. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Paulina Camino. I am the College Web Tech and I'll be facilitating this webinar. First, I'm gonna start by introducing all of our participants, all of our college leaders. Um, and then every college leader will give an update on their prospective areas or departments. After their updates, we're going to open it up to Q&A and answer some questions that we've received anonymously beforehand and open up the, the Q&A live here. Okay, our first participant is our very own Dean Schwartz. Um, hi, Dean. Um, next, we, we're going to have uh, Assistant Dean Jerry Wallace, Dr. Blackburn, who's the Chair of Criminal Justice and Social Work, Dr. Burnett, who's the Chair of Urban Education, and Dr. Don McCarty, who's the uh, program director for social work. I also have Richard Simmons here. Um, he's gonna be my co-host and help facilitate this. He's a coordinator of data management and tracking systems. All right, now let's get started. Dean Schwartz, would you like to start us off with an update, a general update about the college and how we're responding to COVID-19? Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. We're really happy to be able to talk to you. Uh, we've been thinking since this happened, uh, how we can support you, reach out to you, uh, and kind of find out what your needs are going through COVID. I know it's been a stressful and confusing time, uh, not knowing how things are going to continue. So the brief update, and then we'll get into a little more detail as we answer your questions, is we are online for summer, that decision's been made. Fall is still a question. So the president and provost are putting together a task force to look at how we can move forward in the fall. And it depends a little bit on uh, the outcomes of COVID. So I know Texas is slowly reopening. Uh, so there could be different options in the fall. It may be that we're hybrid, doing some online, some in person, maybe that we're wearing masks in the fall. Those are all things we're gonna explore. But in the meantime, we're trying to figure out how to support you the best we can. So we, we want feedback from you on if you're having any trouble with technology and online classes. Uh, we, we, there is now the UHD Emergency Fund if you're having financial difficulties during this time uh, that, that I think Jerry's gonna talk about in a little bit. So we're, we're excited to answer your questions and figure out how we can be assistance to you. Thank you, Dean. Okay, now, now on to Assistant Dean Jerry Wallace. Again, I'd like to say uh, good afternoon to you all. So glad to have you. Uh, for those of you who joined us, um, you know, my role as Assistant Dean is to support you guys and around academic advising uh, keeping you guys connected with student affairs concerns, uh, helping you if you are a part of a student org, you know, making sure that you stay connected, um, as well as uh, any other uh, direct needs that you may have. Um, a few uh, things that I want to make sure that you do know before we get into any detailed questions um, is that, as the dean has mentioned, you know, we are definitely uh, all uh, being impacted by what has happened with COVID-19. Um, courses, again, are online as has been prescribed. Academic advising right now uh, is in full effect. Uh, we have students who are utilizing uh, Zoom capabilities and, and phone and email appointments with academic advisors. Um, so if you are a student and you are at 45 credit hours or more, uh, whether you are a pre-major or you are declared at 45 hours or more, we are advising you. Uh, through the College of Public Service Academic Advising. And you can go and look at our website uh, at CPS on the website and you will see the link there. Uh, most of you may have already been contacted or have already set up an appointment. If you have not had an opportunity to set up an appointment, uh, you know, please don't uh, charge that to the advisors. I can tell you that our schedules are full. Um, so please just continue to reach out to them. Um, if you need to reach out to me directly because you have a question or uh, it's, uh, you're being delayed in connecting with someone. Uh, my email address is wallacej at uhd.edu. That's W-A-L-L-A-C-E-J at uhd.edu. 
So again, if you have any advising questions or any concerns around courses for the summer or fall, uh, you can't get in contact with the advisor or their schedule is booked, uh, which it, it may be so, um, go ahead and shoot me an email address and I will uh, shoot me an email and I will definitely uh, respond to you as quickly as I can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace. Uh, now we will move on to Dr. Blackburn with an update for criminal justice. Hi, Gators. So nice to be able to speak to you today. Thank you for joining us at this town hall and uh, allowing us to provide you some updates and answers to the questions that you have. Um, of course, we'll continue to answer questions after this town hall. Like Dr. Wallace said, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, with any questions or concerns that you may have. So I am the department chair for criminal justice and social work. Um, I am a professor of criminal justice. And so today I'm going to be providing you some updates on our criminal justice programs and uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. McCarty, who is our social work program director, will be focusing on our social work program updates. Um, but we are working very closely together to make sure that we're, uh, we're responding uh, to all of the needs of our students in the Department of Criminal Justice and Social Work. So for criminal justice, as Dean Schwartz mentioned, um, all of our classes are fully online this summer. You may have noticed that on the class schedule if you have had a chance to uh, look at that, and hopefully you have, and um, even uh, had a chance to register. Um, we uh, are uh, still moving forward with the fall schedule that is posted, although if there are any changes to that, we will let you know as soon as we can. Um, our student organizations are still uh, um, um, trying to find ways to um, connect and uh, uh, allow you the opportunity to network with one another. And so if you have, um, or if you are a member of, or if you're interested in joining uh, a prof the Professional Society of CJ Students, uh, which is the, um, the organization um, headed by Dr. Beth Gilmore, you can contact her, or Alpha Phi Sigma, um, who is um, headed up by Dr. Barbieri, you can contact her for more information. Uh, for our MSCJ program, our classes, again, are fully online. And for those of you who are undergrads and graduating and considering uh, applying to the MSCJ program, which we hope that you do, um, you, can, uh, you can go ahead and do that now. If you have any questions about applying, you can contact uh, Mr. Corey Kilgore or Dr. Jace Falcor, who is our MSCJ program coordinator. It is important to note that um, the GRE is not required for application to this program. So although um, those standardized testing um, requirements, I believe, are being waived, um, it is actually not something that is required uh, for application to our program at all. So, um, so that isn't something that you um, should be concerned about or worried about at this point. Um, I would uh, just like to encourage you to uh, continue doing the best that you can um, this semester. I know we're still working on getting through the spring semester together. Everybody is doing such a great job um, managing all of the things that come along with the transition, uh, whether it be uh, school related or family related or job related. and I just want to take uh, the time to say how proud I am of all of you for managing this transi transition so well. And, um, and again, that we are here to support you and to guide you um, as we um, successfully complete spring and move into summer and fall. So I will um, leave it there and um, hand it back off to um, Paulina, um, unless we're going to do questions now or save questions for later. Thank you, Dr. Blackburn. Yes, we're going to save questions uh, for later and we'll open it up to, to everyone. So next, okay. we're going to hear, 
Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Burnett Sanchez, the Chair of Urban Education. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm glad that you are um, watching this video uh, to try and stay in touch and to try and make sure that you're able to continue well um, with your courses at UHD. Um, just to um, reiterate, I am the Chair of the Department of Urban Education. So if you're one of our education students, um, I want to say that um, we're working with you. We're hoping that things are going okay with you all and your families, because I know that family comes first. But we also want to know, want, I want you to know that we're here, the faculty, the administrators, the whole team, the whole urban education team at all the sites, Northwest, uh, Downtown, and Kingwood, we're here to help you. Um, if you have some questions, if you have concerns, if you're very worried, different things are happening, and you don't know what to do, um, reach out to us because we are here. Um, a lot of us are in similar situations. Um, I know that I've got a child right here in my arms. You can't see him because he's purposely out of the video, um, but we know that it's a balancing act right now. We know that people are being laid off and may not have jobs. Um, what we don't want you to do is feel, we don't want you to feel that you're alone out there. Um, so if you do have questions, reach out to us. I'll give you my email because I know the advisors are booked right now. Um, it doesn't mean don't try, but I, I want to give you my email so that you have an additional person that you can contact. Um, my email is B-U-R-N-E-T-T, -T, C like crystal, at uhd.edu. You can send me an email uh, message. Go on the website and find your professors if you don't have those emails um, to reach out to them. But we're really working we're here for you, and as a team, in our faculty meetings, we've discussed working with our students. Um, I know perhaps some people are worried about um, grades, how well they'll do this semester. Please know that there are multiple grade options this semester that typically don't exist. So before you make the decision to just withdraw, um, try and talk with somebody, just to quickly talk out the different implications of withdrawing, because quite possibly you can still finish the semester strong without, without um, withdrawing. Um, other things to note, um, let's see, if you if you had your field work, you've probably already heard from Ms. Brown because we've been working with the districts um, and you're probably finishing up with your field work. The, dis uh, sorry, the state TEA has um, made some changes. So we were able to work with the hours that we had and just accrue a few more. Um, so everyone should be set in that. Um, also, Again, just reiterating that you're not alone. A lot of us are going through a lot of different things, but I think it's important just on the self-care aspect of it for you all to, to make sure that you're reaching out to somebody um, to get your network. I know that right now we are separated. So I'm with my household. My sister lives not, well, she lives down the street. And so I literally will wave out to her because I can't, you know, we're supposed to be social distancing. Um, so it can be difficult, but use social media, use anything texting, um, to be able to reach out for um, to your loved ones, your friends and your family. Um, another thing, just to reiterate, um, all urban ed classes for the whole summer, that's in summer one, summer two, and summer three, are online. Um, so that, that's noted in the schedule. Just to note that some of your online classes may still require you to meet at a certain time, but that's going to be arranged um, between you all, the, the students and the professor. Um, so, um, again, all urban ed classes are online in the summertime. We're hoping for being able to be face-to-face -face, um, in the fall, um, but we're going we're gonna to wait and see. I think just utmost importance is to keep you all safe, to keep yourself safe, um, and so that um, you guys can finish Gator Strong. And then don't forget that Gator Grit, because we all have a bit of that Gator Grit, and I think this is when we're going to see it um, come out. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Burnett. The, those are very encouraging words, and I think we all appreciate hearing those. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to hear from Dr. Don McCarty, um, the Program Director for Social Work. Thank you, Paulina, and thank everyone um, for this college. We're very, we're very fortunate to have so many people focused on caring and supporting and nurturing our students. And so let me reiterate what's already been said. And not just for social work students, any student in our college, at our university, we're here to, to make sure you get through, and we will. 
we will. I have every confidence. So far, we're so proud of you. Like Dr. Blackburn says, so proud of you for, for hanging in there, for keeping your spirits up, for staying connected, for putting one foot in front of the other, and for also you know, giving us this opportunity to lead you and help you um, move from one uh, point in your academic career to the next. And sometimes you may need a bit of, of assistance where you haven't in the past. So please reach out to us, even if you've never needed that before. That's, um, that's what we're here for and what um, we as a team are, are eager to do. So just a few extra things I'll add about the social work program specifically. We do have an application process but changes have been made to that process to make it much easier for students. So we had um, letters of recommendation, which we now do not require during this difficult time, right? It's hard to get a letter of recommendation from someone. <laughs> and so what we were asking students to, to do is just give us the name and contact information of that reference. And so that's easy. And um, it's already been changed in our system. So you can go in and just put those names in. And so that should speed up the process for many people. And also too, if you're having difficulty getting transcripts or grade reports, just let us know. Mr. Burton, our advisor is wonderful and um, we'll help you track down whatever you need. We want to make sure we're getting those applications in and we're, we were on a, about a two day turnaround. So um, making sure we're reviewing them um, quickly so you'll get a determination very quickly. So please, we have Ms. Vivian Smith, our administrative leader, and she is a wonderful source of support. Please reach out to her, to me. You'll see my cell phone, text me. <laughs> I'm very good with text or email me and I will, um, I will help you. That's kind of how I see my job is to solve problems or solve difficulties and make sure students keep moving forward. So even if you don't think it's something that should be an issue or that um, it's something I can do something about, you'd be surprised. So give me a chance. I like to solve um, student, student concerns. I don't want students to be worried or stressed about things that we can control. And so please let us help you with that. The, um, we are also completely online for the summer. Social work has been almost since the beginning of our program, either fully online or hybrid. So this is an easy transition for us and our students hopefully um, are making that transition easily. And if you have, um, and if you're a new student, you're planning to apply, we, we're very skilled at online teaching and learning and we're, um, we're ready to go, whatever happens. So there will be no, no stress for students. Um, we've, we've got that covered as we, depending on what happens in the fall. And one other thing, I, I want to encourage you, social majors, pre-majors, or people maybe interested in social work to, part of what we're doing during this time is helping students to stay encouraged about their chosen profession and public service in general also particularly in social work, encouraged about how important social workers are right now in this difficult time right now and then as we recover. So, and just to, to name a few few roles of social work, uh, the, the, the folks running the food bank, the person in charge of making sure people have food and food is getting across the, the city to people is a social worker. Social workers are in the hospitals right now, those front lines, making sure that patients get the care they need that are positive and that their family gets the support and care they need through this very difficult process. They're in nursing homes. Social workers are in nursing homes, working hard to protect people most vulnerable to COVID. And, and also too at the Texas legislature. So we have a lot of social workers right now advocating in Austin for needed change as we go forward. So stay encouraged about your incredible choice to become a public servant in whatever field you're going to go into. We are needed and important and we are here to support this process for you to make it happen. Thank you, Dr. McCarty. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words about the solidarity circles. Yes, thank you. I posted the link to our Solidarity Circles. That's the Facebook page link, which is, stays up to date. And our, this, our social work students are so incredible as we had to transition students out of 
agency field settings because of social distancing needs. We, our field team, our field faculty, our field dire uh, director of field education and our assistant and our faculty members worked with students to design a project where we provide peer support to each other. And so the circles are wonderful. They're online, they're on Zoom, there are solidarity circles in many different areas or groups were sitting together, working and supporting each other, just helping them get through the, the daily, uh, get, get their coursework done. Some, uh, there's a solidarity circle for moms with young children. And so check it out, see if you'd like to join one. And this is a great example of the role of social work um, in terms of mental health and mental wellness and well-being in general. And we're very proud of our students for developing this project and, um, and, for con and it's going to be something we continue as we move forward in our program and be a permanent part of um, what social work students can do in our program. Is this only open to um, social work students, uh, public service well, students? Any student, any student. We've been on the news, <laughs> on Fox, and on um, uh, Spanish language news, we want people to know. We have some um, in Spanish, uh, some groups in Spanish, some solidarity circles in Spanish. We also have some exercise solidarity circles. I believe we have two different Zumba groups running, which has been, I've heard from um, the participants, a great help to their, their surviving at home um, and not being able to get out. So yes, please join, anyone can join. Dr. Liza Lane is um, supervising the project and it was her um, her idea to begin with so we're very proud of her and her uh, work here already she's our newest faculty member and doing a great job already thank you dr mccarty and for those interested i have included um, a link to the solidarity circles in the chat um, and i've also included everyone's emails as they were speaking um, in the chat. So if you want to contact them, feel free to, to look them up. Okay, so that was a lot of great information that we received. Thank you so much, everyone, for updating um, from your perspective areas. We did receive um, some questions. And Paulina, can we have Richard introduce himself too and just talk about how he can support students? Yes, of course. Thank Richard, you. please introduce yourself. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, um, for everybody on the call, we know your time is valuable and thank you for spending some of it with us um, here at the College of Public Service. Um, again, I'm going to echo that we are here to support you. We want to um, learn together and grow together as we're all participating in this social isolation experiment that we all are doing um, for, uh, for Houston. So thank you so much um, for, for joining us and any information that you get here, um, please share with all of your uh, colleagues and all of your other students. One thing I have learned from working with uh, students at UHD for the last five years, y'all are awesome at talking with one another. So, so please share this information a lot. Um, you know, as Dean Schwartz and Paulina said, my name is Richard Simons. I'm with the College of Public Service and I'm supporting and support all students for all three of the programs, uh, specifically when it comes to your field experience, um, your portfolios, um, also, any specific application for the social work program, or if you are in the process of applying to the urban education program and you're utilizing TK20, um, I'm here and I can support you for that. Um, in addition, if you have other questions um, about the college and you are um, shooting out emails um, to everyone here on the call, please include me as well, and we will definitely make sure that we connect you to the best person. Um, and again, I wanna let you know that we're all here um, to support y'all, um, the College of Public Service, and also University of Houston downtown. Thank you so much, Richard. You've been a great help, and thank you for helping me host this webinar. Okay, so we've received um, several questions from students, and they're categorized um, according to uh, subjects. So uh, there was a lot of questions about commencement, um, so I'll go ahead and read those questions and open it up uh, to be answered. And then we'll go ahead and read a few questions specific to the departments. Okay, so the first question we received is, <clears throat> uh, 
let me pull this up. Uh, will we receive any information regarding our honor status for graduation that is based on our GPA? Hello again, this is Dr. Jerry Wallace uh, to try to answer that question and give you guys some updates. Uh, we will also share later on in the session uh, a link. Uh, Dr. Daniel Villanueva, who's the Associate Vice President of Enrollment Management, um, he actually hosted a live uh, webinar uh, maybe about three weeks ago, and uh, it's about 50 minutes long, but there are about 20 minutes toward the end, uh, starting around uh, session uh, minute 33, where he talks about uh, commencement, he talks about Latin chords and different things like that. So we will share that. Uh, in our uh, chat so you can go back and watch that video in detail. Uh, but just to give you a, a short update around that question, uh, currently uh, we have uh, around 144 students that we've been received, that we have received contact for from the registrar's office uh, who meet uh, the Latin uh, courts uh, review at this point. Now that number could possibly increase uh, because it's all based on what will happen at the end of the term. Um, so you will receive information for your honor status. Uh, that message generally comes uh, both from the registrar's office as well as the college. Um, so uh, to kind of get into commencement a little bit, and I, of course I'll uh, give way to Paulina to ask some more questions. Uh, so as we move toward the end of the semester, uh, you will get uh, communicated to uh, both from the registrar's office as well as the college regarding your uh, status. Um, because again, it is based on uh, the end of the term GPA, but you'll get communicated to before the end of the term. Perfect, thank you. Um, there's several more questions all related to commencement, um, and asking for any updates on the postponed commencement ceremony, um, if they can still order caps and gowns, when degrees will be mailed. Um, I have linked, uh, Daniel Villanueva's uh, webinar that he hosted, mostly uh, dealing with commencement, um, that answers a lot of these questions and that's in the chat. And I'll be able to send those to everyone who registered as an attendee also. Um, but I would say to, to reiterate what, what uh, Dr. Wallace said is check your Gator mails. Um, a lot of the updates, you know, we're, we're still kind of working through them and, and, and you'll be updated via email. Um, I did receive one that maybe uh, Dr. Wallace uh, or Dr. Schwartz would be able to answer, is, and that is, will we know if we made cum laude or summa cum laude? Yes, again, that's the same uh, as the uh, uh, honors or the Latin status. Uh, that is really based on your in-term uh, GPA, so as grades are calculated, which usually happens uh, between um, May 13th to the 18th, whenever grades get submitted for faculty. Again, this is a time period during COVID-19 where we are being lenient and flexible with students and allowing faculty to do both the SU, the satisfactory, unsatisfactory grade or the uh, grade review uh, letter grade for students. Uh, so keep in mind that uh, we will still get the information out to you. Commencement has not uh, been scheduled at this point. So we know commencement has been postponed for May. Um, the university is looking at possibly late summer or early fall. Uh, that date has to be yet to be determined again because we are all uh, on uh, hiatus right now as it relates to uh, the, the COVID-19. So again, uh, continue to monitor your email address uh, because all the students who have applied for graduation, uh, the registrar's office continues to send out updates as well as there could be a, a Zoom session that they may host as well. Uh, my president is very eager to host commencement. Uh, he talks about it in the video, how important that is to him, how important that is to you, your families. Um, you may be an international student, uh, someone who has family members who live in other parts of, of the world, and they may have purchased plane tickets or they have to drive or book hotels or various things to be able to come and support you as a student. So uh, even if we have to host a, a commencement ceremony uh, as, as early as late fall or even going into the fall term for both spring and possibly some of the graduates, uh, information had been mentioned, a question around students who were expected to graduate in August. But uh, generally speaking, uh, students who graduated in August or in, in, in the summer of graduation uh, commencement 
uh, there's not a ceremony. So they would generally take place uh, in the ceremony in December. So uh, enrollment management has taken that into consideration. So if we do have a ceremony sometime late summer, early fall, uh, it could include both spring, spring 2020 uh, graduate students as well as those graduating in August of 2020, uh, summer 2020. So just keep that in mind, uh, but that information in detail will be communicated to you via the registrar's office. Um, so I uh, wanted to make sure you guys uh, knew, know that um, and as well as the Latin chords, things of that nature. Um, okay, Pauline, I'll go ahead and let you ask another question. Thank you so much for that. I just want to put a reminder that um, at the bottom of your screen, you have a Q&A and feel free to ask questions um, so we can answer them live on here for all of our attendees. Or please use the Q&A function. Okay. Um, I have another question um, that says, when will the degrees be mailed? Um, I don't know if you know that or if you have any updates on that, Dr. Wallace. Good question. Um, again, that is to be determined. Um, the degree uh, is not limited to COVID-19. So generally what happens is if you attend commencement in May, uh, you don't get the actual diploma in your hand on that day. It's usually mailed sometime between uh, late May going into early June. Um, uh, presently, that may still be the case. Uh, again, we are taking in consideration students who are having challenges with COVID-19 and giving faculty enough time to uh, update grades. Um, so that information as well as far as mailing dates uh, will be sent to you again via the registrar's office where you can get your diploma uh, because as far as reviewing of degrees, um, that still will take place. Um, so you will still, uh, the goal is to still get you your diploma via mail sometime in the summer. Uh, but that date has yet to be determined, uh, but just stay tuned for that. Uh, I want to also uh, answer another question that I know may be on students' minds um, as it relates to cap and gown. Um, if you had ordered a cap and gown uh, from the bookstore uh, up until this point right now, uh, no one has received a cap and gown because generally uh, the cap and gown would have went to uh, the bookstore uh, around early April. Uh, so if you had received a cap and gown, had ordered a cap and gown, uh, it was in shipping to the bookstore, which probably it got there. It's probably sitting there at the university campus waiting on someone to touch it. So it is safe uh, if you have uh, ordered it and it was shipped via the bookstore. Uh, so what we're, uh, the communication that has been sent to students is um, if you would like to uh, continue to keep your cap and gown or if you want to send it back, uh, some students have requested, you know, I don't want it anymore. You know, I want to send it back. Um, there are options that you can do that. Um, again, I encourage you to go back and watch uh, the video uh, that was shared uh, because that information in detail is there. Uh, it talks about the vendor uh, that you can reach out to if you want to send your cap and gown back. I would highly encourage that you keep it um, 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 because it is uh, something special for you. And again, if we do host commencement uh, in the late summer, fall, uh, which we plan on doing, uh, your cap and gown has already been ordered. Um, so we would be able to have it uh, uh, for you. Uh, some cap and gowns I know have been shipped to students um, and you have an option to do that as well. Uh, so if you did order via the bookstore, it's probably sitting on campus uh, waiting on us. Okay, so don't, don't be alarmed by that. Um, someone also asked a question concerning uh, the ring ceremony. Um, again, we normally have a ring ceremony. This would be going into our second full year where students would be able to order a class ring and the president and various leaders uh, would got on campus and you'd be able to put your ring on and your family members would be able to come and we could congratulate you uh, on this momentous occasion. Um, so again, uh, we will not have a ring ceremony, uh, of course. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that if you have ordered a ring, um, you can contact the vendor that you ordered that ring from and they can ship that ring directly to you. Um, so uh, if you have additional questions about uh, who that vendor is, if you've lost their contact information or if you can't find it or whatnot, 
uh, please uh, contact our registrar's office. Um, we can post that information uh, in the chat, how to go on to the registrar's office and look at commencement. Uh, there's a tab in commencement that talks about these things in detail uh, in case you have any cap and gown or ring uh, ceremony questions. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sharing uh, the commencement website right now uh, via chat. <clears throat> Um, Dr. McCarty says that social worker planning a Zoom graduation mid-May. Um, so that's nice. I don't know if she wants to say anything or not, but um, keep your eye out on that, social work students. Um, okay, let's move on to more questions. Um, somebody asked, and I know Dean uh, Schwartz uh, touched on this. Um, they asked, hello, I would like to know what are the possibilities of returning to campus in the fall? And if we do, what measures will the school take, such as students wearing masks at campus, et cetera? Thank you. Yeah, uh, so, so as I said, we have a small panel, the, uh, a team that the president appointed that's working on planning for fall. And you know, things are kind of moving day to day. I know Judge Hildago, uh, ordered uh, uh, mandatory masks in Harris County right now. Uh, and, you know, obviously we'll follow city and state guidelines if we do reopen in fall. Uh, we as, you know, faculty and administrators really hope we can. Uh, and we're trying to plan, we're really trying to plan for however the world looks when it comes to fall. So uh, if we're able to open, and even if we're able to open on let's say a hybrid fashion where people can come to campus and small groups will be planning to make sure we can be successful at that. But as soon as we know what the decision is for fall, we'll let students know. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so we have a question on financial aid. Um, somebody asks, how would we know if you're eligible for financial aid for the summer classes? Um, I was told that if we register that they will let us know, um, but nothing is in our Gator mail. I don't know if you guys have the ability to um, answer that or, um, or what? Yes, uh, again, another great question uh, regarding financial aid. Um, financial aid status, uh, there has been additional aid for students who are trying to take summer classes. So the plan right now of support is uh, there, uh, if you are registered to receive uh, six courses or if you're going to take two classes, um, you will receive the maximum amount of financial aid that's possible. So we are encouraging students uh, to register for at least two courses. And if you want additional details about that, uh, make sure that you go on to the admissions page uh, uh, via financial aid, and you can actually see that info in detail, as well as reaching out to a financial aid specialist. Um, the communication will come uh, via your account because again, uh, typical aid is not posted until uh, mid-May. Uh, so you're about a month early, uh, usually when they post aid, especially if you're taking courses that start in June, it's usually around mid to late May, anywhere between uh, May 18th to May 30th is usually when they post that information so you can actually see it, uh, what the award is going to be for the summer. So if you have not received that information as of yet, uh, uh, don't be alarmed because it's, it's still early. We're still in the registration season for summer, uh, both for May mini term as well as the other summer, summer courses. Uh, but I would just highly encourage that uh, if you have not completed your FAFSA, uh, for this year, uh, going into this year, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, but if you have done that and you do have additional questions for that, again, I encourage that you go to the financial aid page and look at the information that's provided as well as reach out to a FAFSA specialist. Um, I, it's always important to do that uh, so they can ask those different questions. And I am putting uh, in the link uh, so that everyone can see uh, how to get to that website to make sure that you know where to find that information. And let me just add to that. Uh, so what Dr. Wallace is talking about is there's a scholarship where you can take 
two classes paid for in the summer. Uh, and it's first come, first serve basis by need. So I would really encourage people who are interested in that to, to not waste time and get right on that. There's also, you may be reading in the paper, or seeing on the news, there's uh, money coming, a stimulus money coming from the government to help higher education institutes support their students. So that's a process that's in place, but I'm, a, I'm guessing there's gonna be further scholarships to support you during this time. So I'd keep tabs on that page. Uh, and lastly, going back, I, I have, I'm helping my son do homework during this time. So I got a little distracted during Dr. Wallace's uh, talk. So I may be repeating what he said, but for graduates, they actually process your degree in June and typically they'd send you it then, but because they have to, they'll have to wait till they can actually get back to campus to send it out. So, if you graduate, your degree will be processed in June and it'll be sent out to you as soon as we get back to campus. Perfect, thank you for those updates. Um, we have uh, a few more questions, one for every department. Um, so I will start with urban education. Somebody asks, um, I want to take my certification exam, but the website says you aren't giving test approval. How can I get test approval to take my exam? Okay, that's a good question. Um, and for our students, because we're always promoting them to take their exams on time, making sure that they're taking the exams along their way so that they finish all of their uh, certification exams prior to student teaching. So I'm sure you all who are ready to take your exams are eager. Um, the reason that we've postponed offering, uh, giving out text, test approval is because the Pearson owned sites are now closed. Um, at first it was through the 16th of April, but then they extended. Um, so right now it's through the end of the month. Um, they will give us an update because the end of the month is in a few days. Um, so right now it's through August, sorry, through April 30th. So the testing owned sites are not open. Um, so you can't go to those to take your exams. Um, the other issue is that there still is a stay at home order in place and the testing isn't listed as one of the essential um, businesses. Um, so we have looked at the, the situation and decided that for right now, so that you don't get into the law, um, because there are no places to choose from. There are no sites to choose from. So you would have um, permission and not be able to do anything with it. Um, so what we are suggesting is that you all take this time, since you can't take your exams right now, please take this time to study. Um, form some study groups. Um, maybe, I mean, that's a way to also reach out to uh, different friends and, and, and remain together when you are physically separated. Uh, but please take this time to study for your exams. Um, you can even reach out to some of your professors if you have questions about a particular content area. Um, but watch the, I would say, towards closer towards the end of the month. I know we're about a week away from the end of the month, but closer towards the end of the month, uh, you can check our website. We will put the Pearson update on there, or you can also uh, check the Pearson website, the Pearson testing website, um, because they will be giving updates of when they're opening their, um, their sites again, so that then we could um, begin to offer test approval. Um, for those of you who are graduates, so you're in PD3, you're doing your student teaching now, you want it to com complete your exams, um, the same thing, unfortunately, we're still on hold with the, as far as being able to give uh, permission to test. We are also waiting for some answers from TEA. Um, one of the groups that I'm a member of, which are the deans and the chairs of the colleges and departments of education, um, have been in communications and we'd be, we've been able to, as a group, so this is um, all of the EPPs in the state of Texas, the majority of the EPPs in the state of Texas have been in communications with amongst our group and then we communicate with TEA and we've been able to get some answers back but what we haven't been able to get back is if there's going to be any changes in how they address a student becoming certified um, and moving forward. So for those of you who are, who are expecting to graduate, you're student teaching now, you have an exam or something like that to, um, to pass and you, you had planned to pass it before so that you would be able to be certified um, currently that's on hold because we don't know if there's going to be any changes on TEA side, but as soon as we know that, um, then we will, um, be able to address it appropriately. Um, so I would just, for right now, I would just say, use this time to study, 
um, use this time to gather different resources um, and then reaching out to your friends and just monitor our website um, for any update. And we'll, we will let you know because we are interested in getting you all being able back to being able to test. And as, of course, um, for those of you who are graduating for you to become certified. So we're monitoring it um, like you're, you guys are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Burnett Sanchez. Um, again, I put our website for urban education in the chat. Um, it's www.uhd.edu backslash UE. Um, and as we talk about the different areas, I'll list those sites on uh, the chat as well. Okay, so next um, we have a social work question. Um, and it says, will UHD be offering a master's program for social work in the near future? Well, we hope so. <laughs> That's certainly in the works and we're very excited about it. It is a process though. It takes some time and we're actually meeting about it um, regularly and we'll keep everyone posted. In the meantime, if you are about to graduate, Let's, we probably um, are in the next year or so, uh, I imagine you've, we've been talking about this in your coursework because that's always very much an intentional push for us with our students. Um, if you have some questions about other programs that um, if, if you're going to be moving along before we um, are up and running, then um, we want to help you with that. We know, I am to hear know all about the other programs and I can certainly help you get to the one that is um, where you'll be the most successful. But yes, please stay tuned. Tell your friends and family. It's a process and we don't, um, we have lots of folks that have to approve it and, um, but, but we're, we're, on, we're on task. And just so people know, if you are getting close to graduation, when Don talks about a process, it really is a long process. It's gotta go through our Board of Regents and the UH system and the higher ed coordinating board at the state level. So typically it's a year to a year and a half process before it gets approved. So if you're on track to graduate but before then, I wouldn't wait for us to get approval for our program. If you're a freshman starting out, you, you have plenty of time. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dr. McCarty for answering those questions. Um, next we have a criminal justice question. Um, well, it's not specific criminal justice question, but this student is a criminal justice student. Um, is there an early status available for Gators on entering their fields of public service now, um, similar to how medical students enter their field of service? Okay, so thanks for that question. Um, I'll start and, uh, and and if other, uh, if Dr. Uh, Burnett Sanchez or Dr. McCarty want to um, add additional information for other majors, uh, we can do that as well. There are certainly a number of opportunities for criminal justice majors to engage with their profession. Uh, some of those actually occur on campus in your classes uh, in, um, and through our internship course, which does uh, require uh, senior status or I think around 90 hours. So that is something that happens a bit later in the degree, but there are opportunities for service learning, both through uh, certain courses as well as through um, the student organizations that I mentioned earlier and, um, and Paulina uh, was able to put the faculty advisor information uh, in the chat so that you have it uh, if you are not part of those organizations yet. They offer numerous opportunities to engage in professional development uh, um, activities, uh, having um, speakers come and perhaps they're doing some of that by Zoom now uh, or also engaging in, um, in service through the organizations. So um, right now, and, and let me, I'll give you an example of one um, service oriented um, opportunity that all citizens have to participate in, but we would certainly encourage, and we have encouraged our bilingual students to get involved in is the Houston Police Department's Communicators on Patrol Program. And that is a program that uh, allows you to use your language skills to assist law enforcement 
when they come in contact with um, with community members who uh, need a uh, or where there is a language barrier that you could help resolve. Um, and so that is that is again a, a program that's open to everybody. Um, but we uh, we often have our students uh, selected to be uh, participants in that program. And uh, uh, Dr. Gilmore could tell you uh, much more about that program. She was very active with the HPD and the development of it. Um, so there are, are numerous um, service opportunities like that. Now, um, with, uh, as an example, with our internship students that are doing internship this semester, and as I'm sure um, Dr. McCarty and Dr. Bernard Sanchez could speak to, we've had to find alternative ways for students to uh, get those hours that they need for those courses because the agencies are um, wanting uh, to protect um, non-essential workers, um, including our students that are, um, uh, that are doing field experience. So for example, we had some students doing uh, internships in a service learning um, activity in uh, the Harris County Jail. And of course, they're not in the jail right now. So we've had to find alternative ways for uh, students, at least in our current situation, to engage with the profession um, in, a, in either a virtual uh, or an indir indirect way. But, um, but Dr. Gilmore is our career advisor uh, for criminal justice students. And uh, she is also our field experience uh, coordinator. And so she's a great resource in addition to be, being the faculty advisor for, uh, for PSCJS, she can also help you at least start thinking about um, the career track that you want to be on and, and what opportunities may exist for you to get involved early on um, in that particular career track. Um, Dr. Wallace and I um, have also been, and, and the advisors have also been working on some resources for students who are interested in particular career, career tracks. So for example, if you're interested in working specifically with juveniles or specifically with victims, or you're interested in law enforcement or working in the courts, we're putting together some resources that um, assist you in, in uh, selecting the classes that would be most helpful to you to not only build your skill set and knowledge base, but also your resume uh, for when you go to apply for those jobs um, or, uh, or field experience opportunities um, when you're el eligible. And we'll get those to you as, as soon as they're, they're finalized. Thank you, Dr. Blackburn. I don't know if any of the um, other de department chairs uh, want to speak on, uh, uh, on any service opportunities or not. I'll give them the opportunity to do so. Um, I'll just say really quickly that if you're a social work student or from prospective students, that we have a whole field crew, a whole group of faculty who, um, like Dr. Gamora in criminal justice, that um, really look out for students during, in social work, we have a required field practicum. So it's, it's highly organized and structured. And, and so we, and just as a quick, um, shout out to our, um, our field office. So we had to move about 40 students into um, alternative field practicum opportunities to get their hours or they won't graduate. And so they just went into overdrive, created, developed, um, um, negotiated and um, what to do. And so it looks like in our evaluation on Monday of this week, every student is right on target, every student is going to graduate and um, no one's at risk. And so we, we um, uh, in good times and bad, um, are, we have really nicely structured field opportunities for students. So we really want to encourage um, all the majors to participate. Thank you so much, Dr. McCarty and, and Dr. Blackburn for being so, um, for adapting to the situation and still, you know, giving students the opportunity to earn some of those um, experiences. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have, I got another question for urban education right now. Um, it says, I am ready to apply to my PDs. 
when can I apply? Will the interviews be face to face? Okay, that's a good question. Um, because it's where we're, 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 we're here, we're hosting a town hall. Um, we've been communicating with students. Um, we're telling them to reach out and everything because we want you all to be successful. And because we want you to be able to move forward, even in this time where some things have been paused. Um, so if you are a student, you're ready to start your professional development semesters, um, the first thing that you need to do is apply to a program. Um, this means that you are within 12 credit semester credit hours. So typically that's about four classes before you've got four classes left before starting the PDs. Um, what you'll need to do, it's the same process as before. So you'll go into the website and I'll, I'll um, put it up when I'm, when I'm done answering the question, but you go to the website it has information of um, where you can uh, log into TK20 to complete that application. Um, Richard Simons mentioned earlier that he is a person that can help you. There's a video on there that guides you through, uh, through the application process. So you might not need to reach out for additional help, but if you do, um, we're available. Um, right, so what happens, we just finished one application. We finished the April application window and now people are interviewing. They've already started interviewing and they will finish up the interview window. They'll finish up in, an, in the next few days. Um, so right now what happens is applications shut down and then we open them up again. Um, because of COVID and everything like that, we don't have the exact application um, window start date, but it is going to be somewhere around, uh, like I would say start to look back around mid-June um, because what we want to do is allow it for students who had to wait for their grades from fall for the uh, sorry from spring for this semester to post and then the students who are um, who would be ready in summer one who they might be wa waiting for their grades in summer one those students would be able to apply in that window um, so it's going to look like something around probably mid to late June is when that application window will, will open up we give you a couple of weeks fill out the applications and everything a good thing that uh, I mean in, if we're looking at silver linings from COVID um, we do now have a way that you can pay your application fee online. In the past, it was faxing or um, going up to the cashier's office. So even if our campus is back open during this application window, we do now have an online um, way for you to pay the application fee. So you'll do that. You'll complete your application. Um, I always suggest to students, I always suggest for students to open that application, look at all the questions. There are some essay questions, some short answer, some short essay questions that you want to answer. Go in there, look at those, um, go out, type it in Word, you know, revise it, edit it, and then come and go back and paste it in there. Um, so you don't want to try and do it last minute. I suggest um, looking at it when you can and then making sure that your application is complete. Um, you'll answer some other questions about different grades and courses that you've completed. Um, you'll sign um, a, well, a form and then you'll wait for a uh, word back. So we will review your application. Um, if everything looks good, then we offer you an interview. During the, when you're applying, you also choose an interview time. Now, if it's like what we, if it's like what happened now with COVID, um, originally, of course, the interviews were set up as being face-to-face, -face, but as everything has been online right now, um, we transitioned it to online. My guess is because even if the university is back open, COVID is still, we still want to um, slow down community spread. So my guess, it's, I'm not, it's 100% certain, but my guess is that they're going to be, the interviews will be online as well. Um, so far, I've heard good things about the interviews. People have been able to interview. You'll sit with your two, um, your two interviewees, which are two professors from our department. Will you'll ask a few questions, it's like five questions. Um, uh, just come comfortable don't it's it's not a weeding out it's not it's not supposed to be scary we just want to hear your your ideas about your future field and about your preparation um, into teaching so again i would say um check that website uh I'm, I'm guessing around mid to the end of june is when you'll see that application um application window open again but if you go to the website you'll see everything you need to do you now have an, on, an online option for paying your register for paying your application fee. Um, and I think that's, that's about it. So we don't want you to think that you can't do it because we are eager to have you uh, move forward in our program just as you want to, to move forward in our program as well. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Burnett for that update. <clears throat> I have one last question since we do have some faculty and staff. Um, as attendees, this is uh, specific to them. 
So this question says, uh, for those of us with children who are out of school, will we be required to submit vacation or sick time when the university reopens and we have to continue to work from home due to childcare and elementary schools, schools being closed? So this is from UHD staff? Yes. Okay, well, we're actually, we'll, we'll address that at the college meeting this okay. Friday. So we'd, so students don't have to hear that part, but, but we'll cover that at the college meeting and it'll be on our agenda. Perfect, I just didn't wanna leave them hanging. <laughs> Alrighty, um, and I think that's it for the questions and we're just about out of time. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, this uh, will be recorded um, and put on YouTube and we'll share it. And then all the questions that were asked, uh, we're going to create an FAQ and post that on our website. Um, and just, I just want to remind all the students and the panelists um, to follow our Instagram page. Um, we post a lot of our updates there first, even, you know, as they're coming on the website, but you can get uh, first uh, updates on our Instagram page. Um, and that's a, uh, UHD CPS. Thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it. And I know it was a lot of information pretty quickly. So follow up questions, reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help. Thank you very much. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.